Cole requested that we look into the story of Pal Aid. When I looked around a little bit, I noticed that there wasn't much out there for it. So this was going to be a challenge, and I like those because many times I can come across stuff that nobody knows anymore. So let the challenge begin on this episode of Antique Bottle Stories. <laughs> So I looked around on the internet first. Sometimes someone might have a name or a place and I needed somewhere to start. I didn't have any luck. So I headed to the newspapers next. The newspapers usually will give a name or a place and then I can take off from there. So the earliest ad that pops up for Palade is 1945. Palade was a non-carbonated drink that came in a couple different flavors like orange and grape. And I learned from these ads that they used real fruit juice, as did many of the fruit drinks of this day. And all that shows up in the papers are ads for the drink, and then there's several wanted ads for drivers. There are a few promotions in here, like here's a gun holster that you can get if you send in 24 bottle caps. And then here, Palade was giving out six bikes to kids who wrote in why they loved Palade in 15 words or less. Now, these ads popped up in at least seven different cities, so this was not just a small business in a small town run by a family. This was a franchise, and I found a few managers' names in certain locations, like this guy. He's presenting one of the bike winners, her bike, but that's not really what I was after. I was trying to get to the roots of this company, and I noticed it calls the company Pal Bottling Company. So there really wasn't anything in the newspapers useful. I exhausted all the newspapers that I could find and Palade ads stop in 1960. So I went to Ancestry.com to see if I could check their directories and see if I could find a Pal bottling company listed under some of these cities. Maybe there's a president listed. I looked in 1948 for all of them and weirdly I only found it listed in Washington DC. A guy named Lee Woods was listed as president. So is he president of this company or just this location? Well, I had to put a pin in that thought. I later found out that Pal Aid was being distributed by places such as Dr. Pepper Bottling Company in Newport News, Virginia. And in Salisbury, Maryland, it's called Grapeette Pal. And in North Carolina, it was called Cheerwine Pal Bottling Company. So these were already established beverage companies that were distributing this drink. So the next place that I know that holds some secrets is usually Google Books. I can usually find some very interesting things in Google Books. So I put the search in and there were a bunch that came up, but I couldn't see any of the content. So that wasn't helpful. But one result was from the patent office. And this one happens to be from 1967. Pal Incorporated, Washington DC to True Aid Company, Carpentersville, Illinois. Okay, so this is the first time I'm seeing True Aid. So this True Aid seems to be the parent company. So I go back to the newspapers, and the earliest newspaper that I can find is 1940 for True Aid. It has the same spiel as Pal Aid. It's non-carbonated, real fruit juices. The ads even look similar. And I'm trying to figure out why it was made into two different companies if they're essentially selling the same product. I found an obituary in 1981, James B. Smith, Atlanta, Georgia. It says here he served as president of True Aid Bottling Company from 1933 to 1951. Wow, so True Aid was around since 1933? And I couldn't find anything in the paper until 1940. So let's go back at James B. Smith on Ancestry and see if anything turns up there. Well, in 1940, I find James Benjamin Smith, age 36, married with an adopted daughter who's one. He's the owner of a soft drink bottling company. Okay, so that's our guy. So I go back to 1930. He's a loan manager at an auto finance. So when they say 1933, that's most likely when he started in this business. But I'm not sure if he's president of True Aid as a whole or president of just this Atlanta franchise. So I gotta put a pin in that for a minute. I don't want to spend too much time on these rabbit holes if I'm on the wrong track. So I searched around some more and I came across this website with a little history of True Aid. According to this story, a guy named Lee Ward of Los Angeles was the one who started True Aid. This says in 1938. 
Okay, so clearly some dates are wrong somewhere if James B. Smith was president of True Aid in 1933 in Atlanta. Okay, so let's dig in a little bit here and see if we can find anything else on this Lee Ward guy. Well, Lee Courtney Ward was born in 1902 in Illinois. He lived over in Los Angeles in the 1920s. According to this site, he moved back to Illinois in the 1940s to Elgin, but I checked in the 40s and I didn't see him show up until the 1950s in Elgin. The story says that by 1950, True Aid went coast to coast, although it was more popular on the East Coast. Its headquarters was in Elgin, Illinois, and here's a 1953 article that is naming a new vice president and advertising director at True Aid. And that's really the only newspaper article that I found for it that wasn't an advertisement. Okay, so that Atlanta, Georgia guy was not who we were looking for. So Lee Ward ends up dying in 1973 at the age of 70. There was a small mention of it in the paper that he actually died in the Virgin Islands and the family had set up a memorial fund in his name to the Elgin Academy, which is a library. It says the True Aid company dropped orange juice from its ingredients in the 1980s. Apparently orange juice had a lot of hassles production wise. Well, the company by this time was suffering. So another company named Joyce Beverages purchased this company and then they tried to keep the other True Aid franchises afloat. But by 1986, both Joyce and True Aid went under. The True Aid trademark was eventually transferred to 7up and then in 1992, a guy named Alec Gunter, who apparently was a chemist with True Aid, but I also saw his name pop up as vice president. Well, he transferred the trademark to his company in Virginia called Bottlers International. He acquired a few other failed brands as well. He tried to get True Aid back off the ground by trying to convince Pepsi to produce it, but he just couldn't gain enough interest for it. Carolina Canners in Sherall, South Carolina used to bottle for True Aid back in the 70s and 80s and had learned that in 2009 the trademark expired and there were no True Aid distributors in the United States. And they also learned that that guy Gunter had also passed away several years ago. So they picked up the trademark in 2010. Well, the new True Aid did pretty well and other distributors had picked it up as well and began distributing it. But I just tried to see if I could buy some online and I don't see it being sold. But I did find this one site and it says it's discontinued by the manufacturer. So once it's out of stock, that that's all they have. So maybe it's already come and gone again. So now going back to Palade, as I said, the first ad shows up in 1945. So production probably started, I don't know, a year or so before that. The ads stop in 1960. Is that when the production stopped? I don't know, but probably round about there. Since Palade was part of True Aid, I'm not really understanding why they were separate anyways, but I'm guessing at some point Palade was dropped in the early 60s. And so it looks like Palade had about a 20 year run or so. And I happen to find this green variant of this bottle and I think that's probably gotta be a pretty rare one. I know this one was kind of all over the place. Usually I gather all the information, I organize it, and then I present it. But this time I kind of took you along with me and you discovered everything as I did. Sometimes it's just about piecing little pieces together and seeing what you can come up with. And believe it or not, I actually found a True Aid commercial, so I'm gonna leave you with that. And that's it for today. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>